Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Gold Mummies Archaeologists in Egypt recently discovered two gold-wrapped mummies, which they believe could help find the mysterious resting place of Queen Cleopatra. The discovery was made in the ancient port city of Taposiris Magna, located just a few miles along the coast from Alexandria. Within this city, there is a burial ground that was used for Egyptian royalty during the Greek Hellenistic period. That was when Cleopatra reigned as the last official pharaoh of ancient Egypt. The big mystery surrounding the fabled Queen of Egypt is that no one has ever been able to locate her resting place. Nobody knows where her tomb is. Archaeologists are worried that her tomb was swept away during a tsunami in the year 365 AD. Alexandria was hit by a major natural disaster, and it submerged about half the city underwater. There is a pretty good possibility that Cleopatra's tomb was washed away and destroyed, and her remains are long gone. However, that may not be the case. The golden-wrapped mummies found in the temple of Taposiris Magna prove there was a favorite location for burying royalty outside Alexandria. It could be that Cleopatra wasn't buried in the grand city named after Alexander the Great, but down the coastline. The issue is that although the burial chamber had been undisturbed for 2,000 years, the mummies are in a poor state of preservation because water seeped through. But crucial evidence reveals they were originally covered with gold leaf from head to toe, a luxury afforded only to those from the top tiers of society. Archaeologists suggest perhaps these two individuals had interacted with Cleopatra herself, and maybe they can lead researchers to her final resting place. Number 9. Noah's Ark The physical remains of Noah's Ark may have been found almost 150 years ago. The very ark that Noah used to save humanity and two of each animal could be a real thing, and that would change history as we know it. Noah's Ark was considered irrefutable science up until the end of the 1700s. Just like most biblical stories, the Ark was a real historical fact rather than something made up in a book. According to the Bible, when the great rains stopped and the water began to recede into the oceans, Noah docked his boat at Mount Ararat in Turkey. Once there, he opened the doors of his ship and let all the animals out to spread across the new world and repopulate. And so, a research team journeyed to the mountain to see if they could find real archaeological traces of the boat. Mount Ararat is a very interesting place. It stands over 16,000 feet tall and is about 22 miles at its base. It was considered sacred and unclimbable for centuries. The Armenians wouldn't even allow any human to approach it. The first recorded expedition didn't take place until 1829 because of superstition. In 1876, James Bryce tried to climb the mountain. He was an explorer and historian, but not the best mountaineer. He couldn't reach the peak, but he did discover a wooden beam high up in the snow that didn't look like it belonged there. The beam looked like it came from a ship, but it was so big that James couldn't bring it down. He returned to England with news of his discovery, but the beam was never seen again. Number 8. Humans and Dinosaurs In Kuwait, a shepherd was looking for one of his animals when he accidentally stumbled upon an archaeological marvel. The man came to the entrance of a cavern, at which point he found prehistoric art scribbled on the wall. The shepherd had found himself some cave art, and he didn't think too much of it. That was until he realized the artwork showed humans with dinosaurs. Some believe the mysterious cave art in Kuwait proves that humans and dinosaurs coexisted. If true, such a discovery would utterly smash just about every scientific theory on the natural history of the planet. Abdul al-Shalafi is the paleontologist in charge of the site. He thought the images were just modern graffiti until he did carbon dating analysis and discovered that the drawings are real and very, very old. Not only that, but the images of dinosaurs appear to be older than the images of the people and the other animals, suggesting someone had drawn the dinosaurs many years earlier. Al-Shalafi went on to say the pictograms could represent real evidence of humans hunting dinosaurs. 
He even suggested humans might be responsible for the extinction of dinosaurs by hunting them for millions of years. It's a difficult perspective and one that goes against almost every piece of science that we have. But if true, it would change everything. And now for number 7. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Lebo, Shirley, and Jennifer Joey. Thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family. We've got lots more videos like these coming up. Number 7. The Map of the Underworld Archaeologists have found a coffin in Egypt that holds the oldest known map of the underworld. The coffin appears to have been used to hold the body of an unknown elite female called Ankh. Inside the coffin, the earliest known copy of what's called the Book of Two Ways, dating back about 4,000 years, was found. The Book of Two Ways was kind of a big deal in ancient Egypt. It was a simple text which describes the two ways a soul could reach the afterlife, meaning the Egyptian underworld. The Egyptians really thought they understood how to reach the underworld. They thought the departed person could follow the map in their coffin to reach their final destination. The issue with reaching the underworld was that it was extremely difficult. The paths were considered treacherous, some led to nowhere, and there was even a lake of fire involved that could destroy the person's soul. The Book of Two Ways wasn't a map in the traditional sense, but more like a map of the soul. It contained advice on how to get past the demons and guardians blocking the way to eternal peace. But of course, it also detailed specific areas the deceased would encounter, such as the abode of the knife wielders, the gates of fire and darkness, the snake charmers, the path of confusions, and so much more. Number 6. Santa's Tomb if you've ever wanted proof that Santa Claus is real, get ready to have your mind blown. A team of archaeologists in Turkey have finally discovered the very real tomb of Santa Claus. It was found underneath the floor at the St. Nicholas Church in Demre, previously unknown because it was hidden underneath an intricate mosaic. This came as a major revelation because up until now, nobody had known where jolly old St. Nick had been hiding. Historical records show that he was buried at the same church that bears his name, but searches of the grounds over the centuries never turned up a body. Other rumors had been swirling that Italian merchants stole his body and sold it during the Middle Ages. There was an empty grave in the church that had clearly been looted, and the body of a man believed to be St. Nicholas was laid to rest in Italy during the Crusades. But in the end, he was entombed beneath the floor of his very own church for the past 1,600 years, exactly where he was supposed to be. As for just who this Santa Claus was, he was a real man who lived between 270 and 343 AD. He was known for giving gifts to the poor, so benevolent he became a saint and later the inspiration for the Santa Claus character. Number 5. The Treasure of El Carambolo the treasure of El Carambolo was discovered in the 1950s by workers in El Carambolo, Spain. The workers discovered 21 giant pieces of gold work dating back 2,700 years. The gold artifacts were so exquisite, so well crafted, and so strikingly beautiful, it was assumed they came from a highly advanced civilization. Many believed the gold was a lost treasure from the city of Atlantis. Recently, researchers from the Archaeological Museum of Sevilla confirmed the treasure was made locally. The gold came from Spanish mines, meaning it couldn't have possibly come from an outside civilization. Instead, it was likely the product of the Tarteso civilization that flourished in Spain between the 9th and 6th centuries BC. But that doesn't mean the gold had nothing to do with Atlantis. The Tartesians are still a major European mystery. They were highly advanced engineers, built marvelous pieces of architecture, and loved gold. They were ruled by a powerful king and had a complex social hierarchy. But then they vanished. About 2,500 years ago, they disappeared as if by magic. Nobody knows what happened to the Tarteso civilization. But recent excavations at sites in old Tarteso's territory show that the culture was decimated by a tsunami right around the time they lost their power. That sounds an awful lot like what happened to the Atlanteans. 
It could very well be that Atlantis was in Spain, and that they were in fact the people of the Tartessos civilization. Number 4. The Tribe of Clover Hollow The oldest civilization in the world might have once lived in the Appalachian Mountains. The Appalachian Mountains are some of the oldest in the world. They were born 325 million years ago, when Africa bumped against North America. It was such a dramatic crash that the mountains were dramatically pushed up from sea level to incredibly high elevations. Most scientists agree they had once reached elevations higher than almost any other mountain range in the world, except maybe the Himalayas. When the first pioneers began roaming through the Appalachian wilderness, they came across strange evidence of ancient human beings. As far as the pioneers were concerned, they were the first humans to ever live on that land. And yet they kept coming across petroglyphs and mysterious stone alignments. These oddities seem to be concentrated around Clover Hollow Mountain. Two particularly strange stone alignments can be seen at Sinking Creek. On either side of the creek, you can find a stone outcrop that looks like a piece from a gatepost. These pieces of stone look like they were carved by human hands and almost seem to have facial features. Some experts have suggested these were once part of a great gate that stretched across the creek as a kind of entrance into a city in the hills. Unfortunately, there is very little other evidence of ancient humans found. There are enough markings in the area to prove that someone had once been here, but it was so long ago that all other proof has been destroyed or already returned to nature. Number 3. The Wabanzi Stone the Wabanzi Stone is a mystery currently hiding in a museum in Chicago. It's a gigantic red granite boulder with a face carved onto its surface. The face was carved with expert precision, showing a man with a light beard, his eyes squeezed shut, and his mouth wide open as if whistling or singing. But that's not even the strangest part. Above the man's head, on the top of the huge block of stone, is a bowl. It looks like a basin where you might wash your face or hands, but it can't hold water because the water drains through a hole and comes out through a spout at the bottom of the carved face. There are also two connecting holes on either side of the boulder, which may have been used to attach the boulder to a sea vessel. As you can probably imagine, this bizarre artifact has caused a lot of controversy. It was allegedly found at the mouth of a river near Lake Michigan in 1804. Nobody knows how old it is exactly, with estimates from a few centuries to over 10,000 years old. It weighs roughly 3,000 pounds, but had once been much larger. When the Chicago Museum first took possession of it, they cut a huge part of it off because they wanted to make it into a drinking fountain. We still don't know who carved the Wabanzi stone or what it was used for. Some have suggested it was an ancient standing stone in Chicago. Some say it was used by early Native Americans for horrific sacrificial purposes, and others think it was brought by a group of Phoenicians across the sea and then left following a failed colony from the Mediterranean. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 2. Ice Age Britain The oldest human DNA ever identified in the United Kingdom is changing everything we know about Britain. Scientists have obtained the very first DNA from Paleolithic humans in the British Isles. DNA evidence taken from Gow's Cave in Somerset and from Kendrick's Cave in North Wales has revealed the true original British. Two completely different populations of humans moved into the British Isles at the end of the last ice age. The populations were culturally distinct. They ate different food and even buried their dead differently. The discovery was made thanks to scientists from the Natural History Museum and the University College London. The DNA came from individuals who lived over 13,500 years ago. It's true that prehistoric people lived on the British Isles long before the last ice age. However, these two groups represent the first modern humans to colonize the islands. The first group was a culture that spread out from Northwest Europe about 16,000 years ago. The second group also appeared from Northwest Europe 2,000 years later, but they originated in the Near East. In other words, one group started higher north, around maybe Scandinavia, and the other group started closer to Turkey. Each group then migrated in roughly a straight line towards Britain, 
and each group settled at a different spot on the island. What this proves is that the original inhabitants of Britain came from vastly different places and were genetically worlds apart. Number 1. Tabula Cortonensis In 1992, the Tabula Cortonensis was discovered near the Italian city of Curtun, not far from the alleged tomb of the famous mathematician Pythagoras. The tablet was made 2,200 years ago and cut into eight tiny fragments. It was an instant hit with archaeologists because the text written on it proved to be a record of a land transfer between two people. It was a very old bill of sale, an agreement to transfer one piece of land to another party. It's still one of the longest examples of Etruscan writing ever found. This was a huge deal because the lengthy wording of the document allowed researchers to decode the lost language of the Etruscans, the ancient people who dominated northern Italy before the Romans. Much of the language was already known, but the Tabula Cortonensis changed things. It was written in a distinctly unique dialect for the region where it was discovered. This might not sound that interesting, but it proves that even throughout the various regions in Italy, the Etruscans spoke their own specific form of the language. And now we can uncover more secrets. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for more videos about amazing history. See you later. Bye.